Hey folks, uh, so today I thought we could look at river transportation processes um, and I'm going to do this with a cross section of a meander. So if you just pop the title in, this is obviously section C uh, of paper one for AQA and it should be really helpful with your learning of just rivers in general. So we're gonna cover a few different, we're gonna look at some processes and some landforms, and even some transportation as well. So this is gonna cover quite a few things, but in a simple, easy to remember infographic. So in brackets, if you just put meander cross section. Now you should know from science about cross sections, we're just gonna look as if we're, as if we slice the river in two. Um, so if you take your pen and just draw like a big deep um, kind of circle like that and then kind of like this okay so you've got this is like the deep section of the meander and this is the shallow section and this up here is the river cliff so if we start over here now I'm just this is kind of supposed to look like grass I know it it doesn't look massively like grass but go with it um, so arrow, this landform, you can see it's a bit of a cliff, you could kind of fall off it, uh, is known as the river cliff. And in case you didn't know that was grass, just add a, add a label. Okay. Um, and then over on this side of the river, on the opposite side, we're going to have kind of like a slightly bumpy, uneven um, line going down like this. And I'm just going to shade that in. We'll just draw some lines in like that. Um, and over here, this is what we call the um, kind of river beach, really. Uh, and it has a slip-off slope as well there. So if we have our arrow and we write river beach. And what that is, um, it's not grassy. It's kind of sand and shingle and mud that's been deposited on the inside of the bend. And if we draw a line, just to show you kind of where the river is, it goes into the water a bit there too, okay? So we just put in brackets, um, sand and shingle deposited on inside of the bend. Now you should know why it's being deposited here on the inside of the bend and that's all to do with the velocity of the river. The river is moving, if you imagine it is moving towards us like around this corner, it's going to be going faster this way around the corner um, and slower on the inside. So because it's slow it can't carry material as well, it hasn't got as much energy um, so it's going to basically deposit it, okay? I can even draw some little dots to remind you what it is, okay? Right, so now we've done that, let's, um, let's add the velocity, shall we? So, an arrow here, just straight down there, um, and we're going to write slow velocity, which basically means speed. And then over on this side, we are going to have an arrow with fast velocity or speed of the river. Okay, uh, next up, I, I think what we'll do next is bring in the transportation. Okay, so the river moves material all the time. Um, as you know, there's four different types of material being moved. You've got our big, I'm using a different colour for this, you can as well if you want to. The main reason for me using a different colour, if I'm honest, is because I want to just highlight the different um, kind of processes of transport, transportation, which is obviously what we're doing here. So, the, here down in the bottom of the riverbed, we have got something called traction. Now, traction is boulders moving or 
rolling um, along the bottom of the sea, uh, I know you said seabed, riverbed. And that's because they're heavy. They can't bounce, they can't hop, they can't um, really be carried in the water unless there's severely strong flow of water. Um, so generally what happens is they just roll and they roll downstream. And as they roll, they can bump against other um, things and they can break down and, and get smaller. But they start really big and then they get smaller. Now, after that, when they get a little bit smaller, I'll draw it over here, it's a bit, bit bigger. And they're quite angular still at this stage. Um, this is called saltation. You can see I've put the arrows between. So I'll just draw an arrow to it. Saltation. I haven't got a funny way of remembering this really, but um, if you can just remember, it is sort of pebbles. So they're smaller than our big boulders and they are bouncing. I always think of them as bouncing. In the classroom, we sometimes use tennis balls to show the bouncing. Um, or you could describe it as hopping uh, along the riverbed. Okay. Now when they get smaller again, like they need to be quite small now, um, you can see that they're higher up in the water. That's because they're in something called suspension. Now suspension is where the current, remember it's faster on the outside of the bend, um, is strong, so it's actually able to carry the small particles in the water. Um, so they're lifted, a bit like if you go to centre parks or if you've ever been in a lazy river um, and you get carried along by the flow, it's kind of fun. Um, it's a bit like that. So they're having loads of fun being carried along. So that's where the fast current, and it has to be fast. If it's not fast, they just get dropped. Um, carries small particles. And it depends on the flow as to how small those are. Now, when they get really small, you just make out these dots. Um, actually, you wouldn't even see dots, but I'm just drawing dots to help you. Uh, they get dissolved into the water. So if you grab a tumbler or like a glass tumbler or a beaker, if you ever use like a beaker in science, if you scoop river water, it isn't clear. Well, it is in some places, very beautiful, unpolluted places or glacial water. But in, for the most part, it's murky. And that's because it's got rock dissolved into it. Or, you know, sand, shingle, particles and things actually dissolved in there. And that is called suspension. They are... Oh, no, sorry, that is not called... Sorry, apologies. Let's get rid of that. It is called solution another S. Just cross that one out. Right, solution. Now solution is, as I said, where material is dissolved. So we'll just write dissolved material. If you think about chalk, for example, if chalk goes into a glass full of water, eventually quite a lot of that chalk will just dissolve. And it's kind of a chemical reaction really between the river water and the rock or the mud or the clay or whatever is around and it can be really quite murky um, but that material gets carried down the river just like all the other and eventually makes its way out to sea you can sometimes see aerial pictures of where a river meets the sea and it's two different colours and the river is one colour and the sea is another now we've got our river transportation processes I'm going to just underline that because the red those are the four what would be great to add is those, what's happening in terms of erosion. So over here, we've got our river cliff. Um, this has been caused because of lateral erosion. So if I just draw an arrow to there, the river in times of flood has basically been eroding laterally, which means side to side, um, undercutting this river bank. So there'll be actually sort of cracks appearing in this as well. It's been uh, been attacked laterally. So if you write lateral erosion, and then in brackets, can you put like side to side just to show it? 
Um, and that has been undercutting the river bank. The river bank is what we call the side of the river. Now rivers don't just have lateral erosion, they also have vertical erosion. And the vertical erosion has been happening here where the river is getting deeper. So we're just gonna put a big kind of arrow down there. And we're gonna write vertical erosion down there. And that's basically been deepening the channel, making the channel deeper, sort of scouring out the bottom of the channel. Now there's one other thing that you need to know, and that is river load. Now, river load is the term we use to describe any material that is being moved along by the river. So if you just put river load equals all the material, material means, you know, sand, shingle. I mean, go, go to a river, go and have a look in what, what's in the bottom of the river. There's all sorts in there. If you've got um, a little net and you kind of scoop it around, you'll see there's, you know, there's mud, there's clays, there's sand, there's shingle, there's shells and goodness knows all sorts of things, especially if you've got like estuary rivers. Um, so have a look. It's all the material that has been transported or is being transported by the river. Okay, so there you have it. Um, river transportation processes including um, our sort of meander cross section. So we can have a look at one of those as well. Hope that helps.